All right, guys, VLM here, and we are back with a new video, and this is going to be a review of Metro Redux. Now, the Metro series is a series that I never really got into back in the day. With the recent release of Metro Exodus, I decided to give it a shot a couple weeks ago. And I gotta say, I really, really enjoy this series. Now, Metro Redux is a bundle that was released in 2014. It includes the remastered versions of Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light, the two first games in the series. Now, Metro 2033 is based off the book of the same name, while Metro Last Light is a sequel to the game, but not to the book. Obviously, we're going to talk about both games, but first, let's start off with Metro 2033, the first game in the series. The Redux edition of Metro 2033 has some major changes. It was actually made on the same engine as Metro Last Light, and was adapted to mimic a lot of the things that were included within that game, such as the HUD. And the remaster looks really good. I actually was really impressed with the graphics of this remaster, considering the original game came out in 2010, and at the time was considered a pretty clunky game, though it did have some, a really good story and some great gameplay mechanics. This remaster also has some easier game settings. These easier game settings that were implemented into this game allowed for more resources making the game a lot easier. And because of this, this game becomes more action-y and arcade-y instead of being just a struggle for survival. Now for the gameplay. Obviously, Metro is a first-person shooter, which to be honest is a genre I never really got too much into. I've played first-person shooters, obviously, but I never really got too much into them. I did really love Bioshock, really liked Resident Evil 7, which are two games I do think are pretty similar to this series. And I think the two Metro games really stand up to those games as well. Now, the game follows a linear game structure, though there are some underground cities and camps that allow you to free roam a little bit and buy some supplies. The game is mostly set within the Moscow Metro in 2033, after the events of a new nuclear war, though you do go to the surface at some points in the game, which to be honest, is probably the most stressful parts of the game. The surface is terrifying, and you would think that the underground locations, these dark areas, would be the scariest parts of the game, but it really is the outside. When you're on the outside, you really feel vulnerable, you really feel hopeless. In the sense that this world is completely destroyed and there's a whole bunch of monsters just running around everywhere. And a lot of the difficulty that comes with the surface sections is this gas mask system. Obviously due to nuclear war, there's radiation everywhere, so you have to use gas masks when you're above ground. And with those gas masks, you need filters. These filters determine how long you can stay above ground without suffocating. And it's really stressful when you're running out of filters and you're in this massive area of a whole bunch of monsters and you're just trying to survive. And again, once you're out of filters, you suffocate to death. Also, the gas masks, when they get damaged too much, they break. And guess what? You also suffocate to death. Something this game's praised for is its immersion. Again, pretty much the entire game is really creepy and depressing. It has this great atmosphere that really sucks you in. And also, there's some little details that are actually really impressive within this game. These little things that you do that really add to this immersion as well. Something like your flashlight. You have a flashlight through the game, but it starts to die over time. And you could pull out your charger and recharge it if you want. If not, it's going to start flickering and whatever. And also things like like your mask. You can wipe your mask at any point. If you get blood all over it or guts all over it or whatever, you can just wipe it off. It's details like this that really make the game feel immersive and as realistic as a game like this can. Alright, now we'll talk about the combat. The enemies in this game, obviously there's humans and there are mutants. And some of the mutants are super overpowered. There's the basic types that supposedly mutated from rats and they're pretty easy to kill. But there's some bigger ones that are insane. And to be honest, you're not supposed to kill them. There's never a point in the game where they force you to kill one. But whenever they start attacking on you, you pretty much always freak out. Now the weapons, it's pretty standard. I mean, you have revolvers, shotguns, assault rifles, that sort of thing. Which those are the weapons that I did typically use. They're also like crossbows, throwing knives, and different types of bombs. Never really use those though. Though the bombs can be helpful in sticky situations. You can also upgrade your weapons whenever you're at a camp by adding like a scope, a silencer, a better handle for stability, that sort of thing. Health regenerates in the game. However, obviously in the middle of a fight, it won't regenerate fast enough. So there are med kits to help you out there. The currency in the game is really interesting where it's actually ammunition. It's military grade ammunition. And you use those for any type of thing that you want to buy, upgrade, whatever. You can also use them in common. They actually do more damage than your typical bullets. In the original game, resources were very tight you pretty much had to loot everything around you to survive but with the normal setting and redux you don't really have to worry about that too much unless you're an idiot like i am because i did have some difficulties at points with the gas mask stuff a lot of it having to do with filters or it breaking but again it's more so my fault and even then by the time i moved on the last light i had everything figured out now let's move on to the story the story is told in a way similar to half-life 2 where there aren't that many cutscenes, but a lot of the dialogue is given to you 
within the actual game. And in this game, a lot of the story isn't really blatantly told to you. A lot of the story comes from notes, memos that you pick up, and also from these inner dialogues the main character has during the loading screens. In this game, you do play as Artyom, who is the main protagonist of the entire series. And he's silent, pretty much, for the entire game except for the loading screen. Um, to be honest, I never really got into really any of the characters in this game. I think that's one of the downsides of this game. While I do think the overall plot is pretty strong, I do think the individual characters characters aren't that great and most of them kind of blend in with each other. I did really enjoy the overall plot of the game with everything with the dark ones being the most interesting stuff in the game to me as it added a lot of moral grayness to the entire series. There's a morality system throughout the entire game but it's, again it's not blatantly told to you and it's not something that really matters considering getting the quote-unquote bad ending is actually the canon ending and the ending that Last Light follows from. Overall Metro 2033 is a really enjoyable game for me however I do think I'll need to replay it one more time before I really slip on my opinions on it. Considering the first time I played the game, again, I had a lot of difficulties, but a lot of that's because I just don't feel like I knew the game as well as I do now. I did think there were a bit too many shooting sections in the middle chapters. During chapters four and five, it just felt like a slog of shooting after shooting after shooting after shooting. However, I do still think this is a good game. Despite its flaws, I would still give it an eight out of 10. All right, now we'll move on to Last Light which this will be a bit of a shorter section because to be honest, a lot of the stuff here is pretty similar to the previous game, especially in this Redux edition. So Metro Last Light came out three years later in 2013, and in my opinion, it's a better game in every single way. This game has better pacing, better level design, better story, better gameplay. I really came out of Last Light having a much better experience than I did with 2033. Now, story continues one year after the events of 2033 in 2034, where you again play as Artyom, However, this plot focuses more on the Dark Ones, which again, I said were the most interesting parts of the first game, and they're really interesting here in this second game as well. And through this, I think it really expands upon the lore of the series, and also through this game, you also learn more about Artyom, his background, and I really think it gives him the character development that he needed within the first game. The story is told in a similar way to 2033, again, very minimal cutscenes, no dialogue from Artyom outside of the loading screens. However, I do think this game has some more memorable characters than the first game, and some characters from the first game do show up in this game. This game does have have a morality system as well and I do think it's a bit more important in this game especially because the good ending is actually the canon ending this time and to get this good ending you need to play the game mostly stealthily and to be honest I did not get that ending. <laughs> so the gameplay is more of the same. Again the shooting all that sort of stuff pretty much the same. I do think it's better paced though and again there are less consecutive shooting sections and even in those shooting sections there's a lot more different paths that you can take through this game which makes it a bit more interesting. Lo levels are much larger in this game and through that it gives you more options. Cities and camps are more varied in this game with more to do than just buying random equipment. That being said the stores in this game seem to sell less equipment for some reason which I wasn't a big fan of that and overall the game was a lot easier than Metro 2033 where I never really had any issues issues and to be honest that's okay with me considering I don't really play games for the challenge. There's never really a point where I had to worry about resources, about the combat, or really just any part of the game. It was really just an easy experience for me. Obviously I played it on the normal difficulty. If you play on higher difficulties I'm sure you have a much harder time. So overall Last Light is a more refined version of Metro 2033. In my opinion it has a better story, better characters, better gameplay. And overall I would give this game a 9 out of 10. So there we go. That's pretty much my review. Overall I would definitely recommend it you pick up Metro Redux if you want to get into the series. I would think that Metro Exodus would continue on with some of these plot lines that weren't finished within Metro Last Light. And anyways this collection's pretty cheap. You can get it for around 15 bucks. And the games are really good so why not just give them a shot. So there we go. That's my entire review of Metro Redux. Thank you for watching.